Hello everyone, I'm Greg Weaver. Welcome to The Audio Analyst. Before I get into the meat of today's discussion, permit me to share a little history of LP cleaning so that you have some context and perspective. Back in the 1960s, as I was first exploring and learning about the world of 7-inch 45 RPM singles and 12-inch 33 RPM LP playback, the cleaning and care of my records rarely extended past my trying to not overly handle and touch them and keeping them sleeved when not actually on the record player's platter. By the late 1960s, care, and in particular cleaning of my records, became an ever-increasingly important part of my playback ritual. I began using some of the best, and frankly, the only tools available in those days, in particular, the products from Cecil Watts. The first record brush and cleaning system I used was the Watts Manual Peristat. It has a, a central uh, handmade nylon bristle brush positioned between two velvet-covered rubber pads, one to either side of the bristle's position. The literature claims that the brush was made up of over 30,000 closely packed pure nylon bristles, just six ten thousandths of an inch in diameter. It went on to say that each one of those bristles was finely pointed and firm enough to probe down into the grooves of the LP without harming the record in any way. Now, that was shortly followed by the Watt Parastatic Disc Preener, a cylindrical surface brushing device that is about four inches long and about an inch in diameter. It's all covered with a velvet sleeve. It also has a hollow central core that housed another smaller removable cylinder that you would immerse in water then reinsert back into the core of the preener. Once capped and put back in its container, the uh, moisture from the inner cylinder spread to the outer cylinder and the velvet cover, and you were able to clean your selected LP. Now, with your record spinning on your turntable, you would brush the surface of the LP, rolling the preener across the surface of the LP, collecting any dust or particulate debris and because uh, it had been deliberately moistened, that humidity prevented the excess static buildup on your records. The early 1970s saw the introduction of the disc washer record cleaning system, and by the 80s, it had developed into the D4 version. Now, interestingly enough, I remember the original system, the D3 version, and the infamous D4 version that was most vinyl fans' de facto standard for what seemed like forever. But I honestly somehow missed the D2 iteration entirely. That D4 system included a velvet-like padded brush attached to a comfortable and cleverly executed wooden handle that was hollowed out on one end, allowing for the convenient storage of both the D4 wetting fluid and its applicator bottle, and the specially shaped brush used to clean any debris and contaminants that accumulated on the brush when sweeping your LP. By the late 80s, I had purchased a Nitty Gritty Model 1 LP cleaner. It was my first vacuum-powered cleaning machine, and though you had to apply the cleaning fluids manually, after placing the manually scrubbed LP face down on its surface over the two velvet-covered lips of the suction port on this base, as you would turn the record by hand, switching on the powerful vacuum would suck off all the debris loosened by the fluid application leaving a cleaned and dry surface. You followed the same process for side two to completely clean your LP. During this period, I used so many different LP cleaning formulations that I pretty much lost track of all of them. Some from Nitty Gritty, some others from VPI, and a host of other manufacturers. And I even experimented with many formulations of my own. By 1998, I moved up to a nitty-gritty model 1.5 FI. Now, the FI stands for Fluid Injection. 
The 1.5 FI added a reservoir to hold your chosen cleaning fluid. A manual pump to deliver that fluid to the velvet lips to wet and clean the surface of the record. And it had a motorized rotation system to spin the record. Now again, it was only capable of cleaning one side at a time. But I also picked up their 10-inch adapter kit to allow cleaning of 10-inch EPs as well. In 2002, coincident with my meeting and working with Dr. Kevin Blair, who at that time had a loudspeaker company called Bug Tussle in Portage, Michigan, I discovered and began using the very effective enzyme-based LP cleaning fluid he developed, Vinylzyme Gold. What's the big deal with an enzyme-based LP cleaning solution? While the more typical approach to LP cleaning solutions utilizes alcohol, solvents, and or surfactants, which are effective on mold release agents or other accumulated contaminants, enzymatic action affords a biological digestion process that breaks down the microbial attachment of fungi and bacteria, leaving the record a non-supportive surface for those kinds of contaminants, which are more prevalent on older vintage LPs. In 2004, regardless of what fluids I favored at the time, I moved to a nitty gritty Mini Pro 2. It not only had the fluid reservoir, the pumping system, and a motor to spin the record, it also added an articulated arm that you could swing over and drop on top of the LP once it was mounted and ready to wet, allowing you to clean both sides at once. In 2006, I added the venerated VPI HW 16.5 cleaner. This machine has been around forever and has become very popular for good reason. It is quite simply one of the most effective, affordable, powered record cleaners available. Once I had added the 16.5 to the LP cleaning stable, I discovered and started using Paul Frumkin's Audio Intelligent Solutions. The audio intelligent cleaning procedure involved a three-step process. The first step of the audio intelligent process used Paul's enzymatic fluid, followed by the application of a more standard alcohol-based fluid. And the concluding step three was a pure water wash, assuring the removal of any residual formula. This three-step process was revelatory to me at the time and immediately became my preferred LP cleaning process. I soon started to use the VPI HW 16.5 to apply and remove the enzymatic fluid. Because the vacuum tube on the VPI simply dropped into place, it was ridiculously easy to swap. This allowed me to easily swap the arm tube used for the enzyme cleaning stage for another to use with the second stage fluid application and removal, preventing fluid cross-contamination caused by using the same arm tube for both formulas. After the second stage was finished on the VPI, I then moved the record to the Nitty Gritty Mini Pro to apply the pure water wash to both sides of the LP at once. What a remarkable cleaning process. One that still to this day is my preferred process for manual cleaning if an ultrasonic cleaner is not available. By September of 2006, Audio Intelligent founder Paul Frumkin, an attorney by profession, who had created the AI solutions on a bet with some folks on Audiogon who figured he wouldn't be able to actually come up with anything, simply found that he was too busy to continue operating Audio Intelligent the way it needed to be in order to be successful. I discussed this matter at a little more length in my original review of the original products published at Positive Feedback in January of 2007. Enter Jim Pendleton of Osage Audio Products. By the following month, October of 2006, Jim had arranged an agreement with Paul to assume production and sales of the Audio Intelligent Vinyl Solutions, and he has carefully and thoughtfully sustained and grown that remarkable product lineup since that time. But I'm getting ahead of myself. 2015 brought a monumental shift to my LP cleaning and playback experience. I had successfully resisted the move to an ultrasonic cleaner for going on a decade then, 
Even though I had seen the audio desk system ultrasonic vinyl cleaner when it was first demonstrated at CES many years earlier. But I was simply uncomfortable with its rather lofty, roughly $4,000 cost of admission. But coincident with my move to the Kronos Sparta turntable, knowing that it really was the right move, I bit the bullet and bought the Vinyl Cleaner Pro. I gotta tell you, I never looked back and I should have done it years earlier. And look, while I easily understand and sympathize entirely with those of you who find the cost of admission to the Audiophile Ultrasonic Cleaner Club to be too salty, there simply is no other cleaning method known to me that can offer the same level of effectiveness at cleaning NLP. Anyone who doubts that or tries to in any manner rationalize or justify that position is only fooling themselves. If you are unable or unwilling to afford one, so be it. No one is looking down on your decision. But please don't try to pretend that it is not the optimal way to clean and maintain your LP collection. While other methods of cleaning can be quite effective, ultrasonic cleaning sets the bar for degrunging an LP and allowing it to present with its truest voice. And while I have seen a rash of generic branded ultrasonic LP cleaners advertised for $200 or, or less on the internet, my experience suggests that the best results are still obtained using one of the major brands like the original Audiodesk or the Degritter system. To that end, in 2021, I made the move to the newest Audiodesk System Vinyl Cleaner Pro X. And though I have been very well served using their brand of concentrated cleaning fluid, I was very interested when I learned that Jim at Osage and Audio Intelligent had introduced an Audio Intelligent Vinyl Solutions Enzymatic Concentrate for ultrasonic record cleaning machines last fall. Aside from offering the advantages obtainable from an enzymatic formulation, this fluid is ridiculously affordable, especially when compared to the price of the manufacturer's fluid. For instance, the Audiodesk Vinyl Cleaning Fluid Concentrate comes in a one fluid ounce or roughly 30 milliliter bottle, just the right amount to mix with a fresh fill up of the Audiodesk's 4.5 liter or roughly 1 and 3 16 gallon reservoir. Single bottles sell for $33, and that is said to clean about 100 LPs, which nets a cost of 33 cents to clean each record. The Audio Intelligent Vinyl Solution Fluid comes as either a $34.16 16 fluid ounce or a $50.32 32 fluid ounce dispensing bottle with an included measuring cup. <laughs> as I am a charter member of the Too Much Is Never Enough camp, further conversations with Jim revealed that he has found it safe to use up to something on the order of 15 milliliters per gallon of distilled water. Using the 32 fluid ounce bottle for our example, mixing 15 milliliter or roughly one half fluid ounce per gallon of distilled water, that would be enough audio intelligence solution to treat about 62 gallons of water, which breaks down to just about 78 cents per batch. Now I hope that you realize that is less than you'll pay for the gallon of distilled water you will use. By extension, following the recommendation to change the reservoir solution every 100 or so records means that it will cost less than a penny to clean each LP using the Audio Intelligent Vinyl Solution Enzymatic Cleaner. Now that we've established that the Audio Intelligent Vinyl Solution Fluid is substantially more cost effective than the manufacturer's fluid, Let's get to the real matter at hand. How does it compare sonically? I spent a good number of hours over several days of intense cleaning and listening, involving a host of LPs, ranging from records that I had never perceived to need any further attention, to some that had been well maintained and repeatedly cleaned with older methods I'd used, including ultrasonic cleanings, to some known disappointments, LPs that were comparatively noisy and would have to be considered very good plus rather than mint minus. The results were remarkable. And while a small percentage showed no particular effectiveness, almost without fail, 
the larger majority of my test LPs experienced obvious improvement, ranging from merely notable to some exhibiting remarkable gains. What I soon discovered was that the results I was obtaining using the Audio Intelligent Enzymatic Concentrate routinely outperformed those I had using the Audio Desk Concentrate. One of the more dramatic examples of its effectiveness came after cleaning my original 1973 UK track gatefold pressing of Golden Earring's Moon Tan. I had purchased this LP for a dollar in a music store in Fort Myers, Florida back in the early 1990s while visiting my folks. Though it had been cleaned on the order of maybe a dozen times or so over the past three decades, using many of my different methods, it still retained what I would have to characterize as a very good plus rating. After a full cycle cleaning with the Audio Intelligent Vinyl Solutions Enzymatic Fluid, I was really surprised. It was almost hard to believe that it was the same record. After cleaning, the surface noise was almost non-existent. Overall, it presented so much cleaner, delivering so much more detail nuance, punch, and, and air that it could easily be deserving of a mint minus rating. Now, this is after having had it in my collection for 30 some years and after repeated cleanings with every new cleaning regimen I had adopted. I played it shortly after that cleaning for a visiting audio pal who knew it and loved it, and he assumed that I had picked up a different, cleaner copy. I had not. Not every one of my noisiest records was as remarkably restored, but in my testing with my worst sounding examples, I found that even though just about half of the first dozen or so LPs tested realized less significant improvements than the copy of Moontan, they still experienced improvement. But hopefully you'll understand that also means that about half of them many of which had been repeatedly cleaned, including full cycle runs on the audio desk, were restored to almost like new performance. It was just amazing how good this cleaner performed. The results were consistent and excellent. And while neither fluid seemed to present any visible advantage to the luster or appearance of a cleaned LP surface, generally speaking, Records cleaned using the Audio Intelligent Solution consistently exhibited significantly better suppressed surface noise, elevated detail and definition, and improved transient capabilities, especially those of the microdynamic variety, over cleanings done with the Audio Desk Concentrate. One final note under the Need to Know category. The Audio Desk and some of the other ultrasonic cleaning machines clearly state in their owner's manual that the use of any fluid outside of their own invalidates the warranty. The results I continue to experience, and those of the handful of friends and colleagues whom I have shared this formulation with, are so clearly more significant than cleaning with the manufacturer's concentrate that even if this fluid was as expensive as the manufacturer's, or was even more expensive, it would still be my first choice for cleaning my records. It affords that much of an improvement over the manufacturer's concentrate. If you have an ultrasonic cleaner, you owe it to yourself to experience just how good this product is and take advantage of the added value it provides. Most enthusiastically recommended. As always, thanks for taking the time to drop by today. Further information on supporting the channel may be found in today's description section or at my website, theaudioanalyst.com. Please stay safe and keep the music playing. Till next time, cheers.